Uh, welcome, my name is Giacomo Grasselli from Milan, and uh, we are here to discuss whether COVID-19 is a classical ARDS or not. Uh, these are my conflicts of interest, and no one of them is related to the content of this uh, presentation. So this debate uh, arises from the observation of uh, Luciano Gattinoni, uh, who basically proposed uh, that COVID-19 is a specific disease with uh, two distinct phenotypes according to uh, the, the, the value of respiratory system compliance. So Gattinoni proposed that there are two phenotypes, type L, characterized by high compliance, low VQ ratio, and low recruitability, which should be uh, more than 50% of the patients should uh, uh, sh should fall into this uh, category, while the second phenotype is characterized by low compliance of the respiratory system and high uh, uh, intrapulmonary shunt fraction. So this second phenotype is more similar to what we think of classical ARDS. And uh, the, the, according to Gattinoni, the practical consequences of this is that in type L phenotype, so the one characterized by high respiratory system compliance, uh, limitation of tidal volume is not warranted and high levels of PIP should not be used for. So what basically is ARDS? In the first uh, description by Ashbau in The Lancet, as you can see, the loss of compliance is one of the uh, characteristics of the disease, but it's very important to know that in the current definition of ARDS, the Berlin definition, compliance is not uh, a criterion required to define uh, ARDS. And if we look at the definition, we can see that basically COVID-19 patients meet all the Berlin definition criteria for ARDS because they meet both the timing criterion, the origin of edema criterion, and the severity of hypoxemia criterion. So uh, technically, uh, the, the patients with, with COVID-19 fulfill all the criteria of the Berlin definition of ARDS. And uh, there's also another point very important, which is uh, uh, that the Berlin Definition Working Group defined diffuse alveolar damage as the morphological hallmark of ARDS. And uh, if you look at this uh, very nice and important paper just published in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, the investigators compared the lungs from seven patients died from COVID-19 with the lungs of seven patients died of H1N1 pneumonia and with uninfected controls. And basically what they saw was that common to COVID-19 and H1N1 pneumonia was diffuse alveolar damage. So again, uh, patients with COVID-19 fulfill all the definition and all the criteria for ARDS. Uh, but this study shows us that uh, uh, COVID-19 has three distinctive features compared to uh, H1N1, which is endothelial injury, microvascular thrombosis, and neoangiogenesis. So a diffuse and important interest uh, of the pulmonary vascular tree. Uh, again, what is very important to know is that while COVID-19 is, is a distinct, uh, is a definite disease, ARDS is a syndrome which can be caused by several different diseases. And uh, as uh, Jean-Louis Vincent points out in this editorial, uh, ARDS is not a diagnosis uh, because it's a syndrome and syndromes are not disease, while COVID-19 is a definite disease. Uh, with regard to respiratory system compliance, several uh, papers have explored uh, the issue of compliance in, in COVID-19 patients. And for example, this, in this letter published in the Blue Journal, uh, as you can see, respiratory mechanics was really heterogeneous among COVID-19 patients when compared to non-COVID-19 ARDS. And in this paper, the investigators failed to identify two distinct phenotypes. And if we look at all the case series published in the literature so far, you can see that the values of respiratory system compliance are widely different from study to study, from very low values, around 20, to very high values, around 60 ml per centimeter of water. Uh, and also from the clinical management point of view, this is a large case series published by the Spanish group, which shows uh, in, in more than 700 COVID-19 ICU patients that the clinical management, 
the setting of, uh, of the ventilator uh, and the use of rescue treatments for refractory hypoxemia and mortality are basically the same as uh, other causes of ARDS. So I want to present to you now the data of this uh, uh, very recent uh, uh, paper that we just published in the Lancet Respiratory Medicine, where we compared a large series of COVID-19 patients, uh, more than 300 patients, compared to a large control group of patients with classical ARDS, and the controls were taken from the lung safe database and from the Berlin definition database. So all the patients, all our COVID-19 patients were ventilated with protective uh, mechanical ventilation settings in volume control ventilation. Median PEEP was 13 centimeter of water, median PF ratio 124 millimeters of mercury, and the median FiO2 60%. And we compared important variables like respiratory system compliance, ventilatory ratio, which is a proxy of dead space, and the D-dimers, which are indicative on the endothelial and vascular damage of, at the lungs level. And also a certain number of patients underwent CT scan for the measure of total lung weight, and a part of them also underwent CT angiograms to study the the situation of the pulmonary vascular tree. Uh, so these are the, in, in this table, we compare the characteristics of COVID-19 ARDS and classical ARDS. And as you can see, uh, COVID-19 ARDS have a larger proportion of male subjects. Uh, age is basically the same, body mass index is higher in COVID-19 ARDS, and COVID-19 has a higher proportion of uh, severe ARDS compared to the control of classical ARDS group. And here is the results of lung compliance and total lung weight. As you can see, median respiratory system compliance in COVID-19 is 41 uh, ml per centimeter of water, while it's 32 in the classical ARDS group. So in COVID-19, it's like 28% higher, uh, but with a wide distribution, as we will see shortly, uh, no difference in total lung weight, at the median level of the dimers in COVID-19 was about 1800. And what is very important, ventilatory ratio increases with increasing the dimers. Uh, again, showing a relationship between the uh, endothelial and vascular uh, compromise and uh, the dead space uh, fraction in these patients. Um, this is the distribution of compliance. And as you can see, compliance of the respiratory system in both population, COVID-19 and classical ARDS is unimodal. So even in COVID-19, we did not identify two peaks, a B-model distribution as, as one would expect if there were two distinct phenotypes. And as you can see, the distribution of COVID-19 of compliance in COVID-19 ARDS is unimodal and shifted uh, towards higher values but uh, most of the values are basically superimposed. Uh, as you can see, only 5% of the patients with COVID-19 have respiratory system compliance values higher than the 95th percentile of classical ARDS. What is uh, very different from COVID-19 and classical ARDS is the relationship between compliance and severity of oxygenation. Because as you can see, in classical ARDS, there is, there is a clear relationship between uh, compromise of respiratory mechanics and severity of oxygenation. While in COVID-19 ARDS, uh, the median value of compliance is basically the same in mild, moderate, and severe ARDS. So, and, and this is the quantitative, quantitative CT scan analysis. And as you can see that in patients, with respiratory system compliance higher than the median value of 41, uh, there is a higher proportion of hyperinflated and normally aerated areas compared to the patients with compliance below the median value. Um, and then I'm going to show you the results of the CT scan analysis. We basically uh, subdivided the patients in four subgroups according to uh, the median value of the dimers and the median value of respiratory system compliance. And uh, as you can see, these are the construction of the distribution of ventilation and perfusion at the CT scan level. And as you can see, patients with high D-dimers have uh, a very high proportion of these purple areas, which indicate hypoperfusion. 
And if you look at this very nice uh, three-dimensional reconstruction of the pulmonary artery vascular tree, you can see a lot of red lesions, which are basically diffuse uh, emboli and thrombotic lesions within uh, the pulmonary vascular tree in a patient with, with very high D-dimers. And what was very, very interesting was that if we look at the Kaplan-Meier survival curves in the population, we see that the patients with both endothelial and vascular damage indicated by high D-dimers and diffuse alveolar parenchymal damage indicated by low compliance, uh, patients with both uh, high D-dimers and low compliance have a significantly lower, mor higher mortality than the other patients. So the overall mortality in the entire population was 35%, but the, the subgroup with high dimers and low compliance had a mortality higher than 50%. So these are my conclusions, uh, is that in COVID-19 related ARDS, lung morphology and respiratory mechanics largely match those of classical ARDS. In COVID-19, endothelial and parenchymal damage coexist and can be identified by measuring and monitoring at the bedside respiratory system compliance and D-dimers. Uh, the ma major pathophysiological mechanisms in uh, COVID-19 are VQ mismatch, increased dead space, and loss of hypoxic vasoconstriction. Uh, based on our data, we, 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 we cannot recommend to, uh, um, to use larger than recommended tidal volumes and plateau pressure, even in patients with high compliance. But uh, what, we can, uh, what we can suggest is that probably higher levels of PIP are not warranted in patients with high compliance and increased dead space. And thank you for your attention.